Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. Today we are going to be talking to you about the McDonald Observatory in Southwest Texas, just out of Fort Davis. And we are currently uh, staying at Davis Mountain State Park, and that's just about 12 miles from the observatory. This was our second visit there. And whether you've been there once or 15 times, I think it's an amazing place. It is uh, the reason all of this area is dark sky country and uh, the visitor center, let's just go on and show you the visitor center is is on par with a national park visitor center, I feel like. I it's uh, got a lot of information. But dark sky means simply you're not wasting light. Any outside lights are going to have domes that keep the light going down instead of going, instead of lights just shining up or shining out. Um, and everyone in this region basically agrees yes. to do that to keep this facility uh, open. I did not realize until this visit that this actually, um, a man named McDonald was a bachelor and he was quite well off and he donated a million dollars to the University of Texas astrology program before they actually had one. <laughs> they had a label, but he'd become interested in astrology and so that's what he left his money with. I believe it was another university that had a large... Or Chicago. Uh, astrology department, but no money. They kind of partnered together and that's and the 30, genesis of this project. For 30 years, Chicago was in charge of this observatory. I did not realize that the actual f starting of this started back in the 30s. Uh, it was just, the history was interesting. The two mountaintops essentially that the observatory is on, that land was donated. And now there are projects that they suspect it's on black energy will earn them a uh, Nobel Prize. Uh, and it includes, I believe, the University of Tokyo, the yes. Air Force, I mean, a &M. It, there are tons of, you know, it's pretty big name stuff. Yes. And we don't have video of the star party because there's no photography. <laughs> Anything that has a screen, they don't want you to use because that's going to put out, emit light. And so uh, they want to keep everything as dark as possible at those star parties. But I will show you a little bit of the video of their photography of the night sky uh, that they had playing there in the visitor center. It's just incredible. Um, and but I, the daytime, the guided tour, you can do a self-guided tour, but we did the guided yes, tour. Yes, and I'm glad we did. The, the second largest mirror telescope in tied for a second with three others in the world is here well there's a hundred and seven inch reflective telescope and you actually get to go inside of that i don't remember all of the specifications i'm going to put that on the screen here it's I do massive know it weighs a hundred tons more than a hundred tons and i will show you video of him moving that that's one of the things about going on that guided tour is you actually get to see these things in motion yes. now they're not opening the uh the sky and the, yeah the <laughs> aperture if you will of the building uh, but we were on the fifth floor of that building. Uh, I walked up the stairs. Mylena rode on the elevator. And the elevator, when you get to the third floor, there are no lights on the elevator. And he let us know it's going to be dark. We're not having, it's not broken down. It's not going to stall. We just like it dark well, when it gets to the fifth. And so... It stayed dark until the doors opened. Well, on the third floor is actually where they are uh, doing the research on all of the data that the telescope brings in. And so uh, he showed that the tele nobody's actually standing at the telescope, you know, doing this, that all of the information going through fiber optic, fiber optic cables down to uh, the, the third floor. fourth floor, I believe. The third floor is where they resurface the mirrors. Right. And what was it? One aluminum can can resurface this 107 inch uh, diameter mirror 10 times yeah. or something. It's it's just fascinating. They talked about how they resurfaced, the mirror, resurfaced that mirror, etc. And then... 
And how they clean them. Yes. Uh, that one, they put in a vacuum. And uh, it, it's they and, and the floor is actually a platform yes. so they can lift up heavy equipment, etc. Or, t- like, take parts down. There's a, a picture I have there where that's actually a, another mirror over against the other wall that they're servicing that fits on the front end, if yes. you will, of that telescope. The other telescope that you get to go in and look at is the one in the Silver Dome, and that one is a uh, where they've taken, I believe it was 91 mirrors that are essentially a meter wide, and they've honeycombed those things together. And that one collects so much data, I've forgotten how much they say, but that's the one that they're using to study dark energy. Yes. And... um, that one, because it's actually open, those mirrors are cleaned three times a week. Yes. And uh, he did say they have very specific uh, guidelines so far as humidity, wind, dust. They clean them with dry ice because you have dry ice in a solid form, and then as it melts, there's no water it turns to gas and so it doesn't leave anything on the mirror and folks let's just say two people that are not scientists <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we glean this much information it's just super neat to be able to go in and see these things yes and so um if you're anywhere you're planning a trip to southwest texas um you know we're on this tour of the Southwest Texas region, we're trying to show you a number of places uh, that you can go and visit. And I know most people that aren't in the state think of Big Ben. Yeah. We're showing you basically everything except Big Ben. Yes. <laughs> because that's what people know. Um, but this is one of those places that it's just... The, f- the fact that this has been go- been in existence for all- for 90 years. Yes. Uh, and one other thing he said, I believe it was the process they used to resurface the mirror. Yes. Was established in the 60s. Yeah. And that technology is still up to date. The- so how they designed it in the 60s has been a pattern yes. for others. <laughs> so... Um, you can see those telescopes from the scenic, the you sky sure drive can. here at um, or just Fort driving Davis. around. You'll see them on the hill as you're driving up there. And we're gonna let you in on a little secret. Our favorite picnic spot is on the road going up there. Unfortunately, there's just one table. <laughs> uh, but even if you have to just sit on the little ledge there and eat your picnic, it would be worth it because it's a very scenic spot. Yes, but. That uh, tour, the visitor center, there are three different things you can do. You can do the guided, well, actually four. You can do a self-guided tour where you just pay the $3 entrance fee and you're driving around looking at the outside of these buildings. The guided tour, which is what we did uh, yesterday, uh, I believe was $10 a person to get to go inside of the telescopes and have all of this stuff explained to you. There's solar... A solar party that's obviously done during the day, and they're using a telescope to examine the surface of the sun, et cetera, showing solar flares. We did that last time we were here. Uh, And then the star party. Which is the biggie. That's the one, if you can only do one thing, that's the one you need to do. Yeah, that star party is just amazing. And I don't get out much, but I didn't know that there were lasers that you can just point in the sky. You see this laser up there. I, I didn't know. Yeah, constellations. <laughs> we don't know necessarily constellate. Well, we don't know constellations. And they're pointing at them. They're pointing uh-huh. them out there in the sky for us. And that is something. And then they have uh, the three, I don't know, I think those were probably 30-inch telescopes that are around the uh, the floor there, if you will, where the star party is. And then they have some other they're big telescopes, they're not but they're not inside. You'd have at your home. They're <laughs> not inside of a building right. as such, but they have other telescopes, and they have people ensuring that you see what you need to see. 
when we were here before, we saw the rings of Saturn. Yes. Um, because of, is it Jupiter that's so close right now? Yes. Um, I'm sure they're looking at, I hope I'm right on this, the moons yes. around Jupiter. Um, because they're going to have people pointing that, they're going to have the telescopes pointed in the right direction and those things in view and, you know, making sure that uh, you see that. And then I will say one other thing is I did see a sign saying if you wanted eye shields, uh, that they had those available um, to, to go out and look at these things. But it is just a fascinating place. And if you can dedicate a day so that you can go and do as much of this as possible, that's great. Um, and the cost isn't astronomical. It's a $3 entrance, entrance fee. Entrance fee. And ours, the the guided tour was... I thought it was $10 uh, a piece. Am I wrong on that? It's It was, yeah, $10 a piece for the and, guided tour. And the, the star party, I think, is around $30 a piece or something, but it is the... Yes. Primo uh, that you're going to want to see. But anyway, um, we hope you've enjoyed our brief look at some of the things you can do there at McDonald Observatory. And if you get a chance, get out there and see it yes. for yourself. <laughs> Thanks for watching Two Tired Teachers. One so tired she forgot her glasses. <laughs> One can see you. <laughs> well, not really. You're in a video. But... You can see them. That's it's amazing. Kind of like that old chunk. Yeah. And I see Mary and I see Stephen. Romper room. I don't remember it, but that was her favorite. They never said her name. We don't get it. She watched regularly.